Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you're new to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragons. Today I'm coming at you to the Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Bjorn's Path. So, Dawn Chorus actually got a bit of an update the other day, and they released Day 2 content for two characters. So, you know, I think you guys might be getting another Dawn Chorus video tomorrow on another character. Hmm, I wonder who it'll be. But anyway guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? Alright, <clears throat> alright. Let's do it. Oh, I'm saying you're up. All right. I'm like I stopped replying to him because I was just, because I was a stupid dumbass. Imagine my surprise when I saw Miko again here in Norway at this university I got into. We're in different departments, but it was a nice surprise. And just re and just resumed our friendship as if nothing happened, which is starting to concern me a bit. The more I think of it. Why did you choose the university here and not in Finland? Well, that's a good change of topic. Thank you. I wanted to study cognitive science, and none of the universities back home had a good syllabus alongside the facilities for that. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that subject. What is it about? It's a broad field encompassing neurobiology, psychology, and anthropology. Its main focus being the process of cognition, and what's more fast and what's more fascinating than that? It's how we perceive the world around us, and how we perceive ourselves. Potentially, it's the key to understanding the animal mind. Wow, I think I sounded smart. Maybe even convincing, if I had some luck. <laughs> That's interesting. It overlaps a bit with what I'm studying. We'll see if you'll find a job after that, though. Look who's talking. You're studying marine biology, Miko. Hey, it's also an interesting field. Marine mammals are similar to us in many ways, but do not evolve the opposable thumbs and do not walk on two paws. We cannot yet communicate with them, and I want to work on bridging that gap between us. There's a lot of scientific work to be done here. Really now officially warming up to the idea that other creatures around us are also sapient. And what made you study neuroscience, Bjorn? Hmm. Well, being a neuroscientist is a respectable job, isn't it? This is an odd answer for sure. It sounded as if he was trying to convince himself as much as me. These aren't really interesting. What's really interesting is botany. We all look at Klaus, taken aback. He continues, though, not even looking up from his plate. Plants are much more interesting than any animal. We think so highly of ourselves, but this planet belongs to the plants. Without them, no animal could live. What's up with that evil look in his eyes? Attention, everyone! I have a few important things to say. The cafeteria goes silent in an instant. Everyone turns in Coach's direction, who is standing next to his seat. Welcome to the first day of our winter science camp. Ahead of us is a week full of activities, lectures, and practical classes, and some leisure time as well. For now, we'll let you rest. After lunch, you're free to do whatever you, ple whatever you please. Today is for integration and fun. <clears throat> Devin takes a note, uh, note out of his pocket and starts reading from it. Dinner is at 1600. Or, 16 o'clock. Dinner is at 16 o'clock here in the cafeteria. This evening, if the weather allows, those who signed up for it will be observing stars from the terrace. All the guest houses facilities are at your disposal. This includes a swimming pool, a sauna, and a common space with a snooker table. There's a sauna here? Small win for me. Please remember that tomorrow we're meeting at the entrance at 7.45 for a trip to the town. Don't be late. Breakfast is served at 7 o'clock. Devin folds the paper back and hides it in his pocket, looking around the room at all the students. You're all adults, so you're free to leave the guest house. Just, please, don't do anything stupid. It'll be us teachers who would have to handle that. If you need anything, you can find me in room number two. In case there's an emergency, I am your first person to contact. I see that most of you have finished already. That's all for now. You're free to go. I can't wait for the trip to town. It's been so long since we last went somewhere together. Should be nice, yeah. I'm a bit worried that there won't be anything to do in such a small northern town, though. Have you actually read anything about this place? It's not exactly small. Not really. I didn't want to spoil anything for myself. I'll see it tomorrow with my own eyes. I stand up and stretch out, groaning. My muscles are still a bit stiff after that overnight ride. I think I'm more tired than I thought. So, see you later? I'm going to my room for a while. I'm going to go to my room for a while now. Yeah, see you in a while. Come visit me later if you have some time. See ya, Garvin. See ya. Be seeing you. <laughs> I 
That Klaus, that Klaus is an interesting boy, let me tell you. Not even an hour of the camp has passed, and it looks like I've already made some friends here. Ah, oh, that's a good start. I grab a sunshine bun from the plate and take a bite, holding it through the paper. It's so good. I let out a pleasured sigh. Turning around, I walk out the cafeteria with the sunshine bun in my paw, heading towards my room. I bump into a few students on my way out of the cafeteria, but thankfully the bun didn't take any damage. Well, at least the bun didn't take any damage. Now the students, on the other hand, they're in the hospital right now. Leaving the, room crowd, leaving the crowded room, I catch myself humming a melody. I haven't been in such a good mood in a long while. And I've got every reason to be. The air here is clean and pleasant, even inside the guest house. I have nothing to worry about. No classes, no assignments, no groceries or cleaning to be done. It's so peaceful here, and I feel this strange energy building up inside me. Excitement for the coming time that threatens to explode. I'm free. I have nowhere to hurry, and at the same time, there's so much I want to do. And we have the whole camp ahead of us. I already can't wait to walk around the forest here, take some photos, and hop into the sauna afterwards. Walking through the glazed door part of the corridor, I see the same panorama of the mountains as from my room. I can't get enough of this view. The shrouded peaks covered in snow, barren and raw. The forest undulating in the wind. The falling snow, pearly white and gleaming. Beautiful, isn't it? I yelp, startled. I got completely lost in my thoughts, and I did not hear the footsteps behind me. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I saw you standing there and daydreaming. What's up? Just thinking about how great it is to be here now. Mm-hmm. It's good to change the scenery from time to time. Miko walks up to the window and stands beside me. His arm almost brushes against mine, but he doesn't move, from, move further away, his gaze focused on the view before us. But then his tail touches mine for a brief moment before he sways it to the other side. Looks like he's still hesitant to, init to initiate physical contact, but maybe he's unsure if I would be okay with it. I move a bit closer to him so that our arms touch. He's shorter than me by a head, so we, can, so we can't bump shoulders, but I hope he understands the gesture. A subtle smile appears on his snout. I brush my tail against his and he doesn't shy away, keeping close to me. Hey! Good to see you two getting along well. Suddenly I hear the Sanuki's voice behind us as he approaches us and pats our backs unceremoniously. What are you two doing here? Just looking outside. Really depressing, isn't it? I'm starting to miss the sun already. What? You don't like snow? It's fun for a while, but I'd rather be on the beach now and catch some fun can catch some sun in my fur. Is that what you moved to Norway for? No, not really. I like Vikings a lot. Cold, a little bit less. Vikings? Yes, like in Thor. I like that movie a lot. Like in... what? Travis. Or, you know, never mind. Anyway, I'd better be going. I want to rest a little bit after lunch. You know, digesting takes some energy. Have a nice rest. I'll be in room then in any case. You know where to, f you know where to look for me. Feel free to drop by. I nod and turn around, continuing to my room. Finally standing before the door to my room, I put a paw in my pocket to take out the key. And so it begins. But it's not there. I go my paw inside the pocket, but it's empty. I check the other pocket. Only my phone is there, and of course I wouldn't put the keys in the same pocket as my phone anyway. I feel the cold sweat on my forehead. No. No. Things like that don't really happen. There's literally no way I could lose that key. I always put my keys in my right pocket, and I wear trousers with deep enough pockets that nothing falls out. I press the handle to try to open the door, but it doesn't budge. I knew it, would lock. I knew it was locked anyway. Okay, two deep breaths. The key must have simply fallen out of my pocket somewhere along the way. Maybe in the cafeteria. I simply have to retrace my steps and look for it. And then they never heard from the key again. I turned back around and walked down the stairs, scanning the carpet for any unexpected shapes. Some students pass and pass me along the way, and I try my best not to look distressed. I don't want the others to look at me as if I'm some clumsy kid, but foremost, I'm scared of possible fines for losing a key. I'm just a student without any job. I can't really afford putting even more strain on my budget. Better not even consider it. I feel like I'm already on the verge of a panic attack. I might have wanted some adventures during this camp, but this is definitely not what I had in mind. What if someone already found the key? That's entirely possible. If I found the key on the floor and I didn't know if I found a key on the floor and I didn't know who the owner was, I would return it to a teacher. Coach Devon said to contact him if they need anything. Maybe I should go straight to him and ask for advice. Uh, I'll look for the key. No, I don't want to bring anyone else into it before I check the corridors and cafeteria myself. I'll leave that for the last resort. Carvin? What are you doing? 
I almost jumped back, startled. Why is everyone so settled scaring me today? Oh, Bjorn, hi, I didn't see you there. I try to hide my nervousness the best I can, but my voice still comes out slightly quavering. Thankfully, he does not seem to notice. Ha! You must have been daydreaming pretty hard. It's quite easy to I'm quite easy to see. Actually, I've lost the key to my room and I'm looking for it now. Oh. That sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I must look pretty downcast right now, with how he's looking at me with sympathy. You know what might have happened to it? No idea. I'm retracing my path and looking for it along the way. Hmm. Hey, uh, how about I tag along? I'm not really doing anything right now, anyway, and maybe I could help. My ears perk up at his words. I definitely would feel better having someone by my side now. Sure, I could use some company. Tag along if you wish. Bjorn nods, shoving his paws into his pockets. So, you went straight to the room after your, after lunch, or did you go anywhere else? I went straight to my room, and so I hope I'll find the key in the cafeteria. Okay, let's go then. I'll keep my eyes open, too. Ooh, maybe someone left their sunshine roll there. I chuckle. He's more of a glutton than I thought. And frankly, I would gladly have ha have another one, too. We continue down the corridor to the cafeteria together, side by side. Sorry, guys, that was me accidentally slapping my keyboard. His steps are longer than mine, so I have to walk faster than usual to keep up with him. I listen to the heavy thuds of his paw steps getting in and out of sync with me on mine for a while, scanning the floor for the key. Just minutes ago, the cafeteria was bustling with students, but now it's eerily silent. Tables are still covered with checkered tablecloths, gleaming in the sunlight filtered through the windows. Looks like the sun came out from behind the clouds for a moment. Even though it's only a while after noon, it it's already is low on the horizon. We're above the Arctic Circle, after all. The eeriness of the empty cafeteria and the Arctic sun makes it all seem like a scene from a film. Yeah, the food is gone already. The sudden sound of the door closing after us echoes in the room, startling me. For a moment, I forgot why we were even there. I snap out of my daze and start to look around instead, but to no avail. Do you see the key? No, it's not here. Someone could have found it returned it already. Or so I hope. The most sensible thing to do now would be go to reception and try to sort this thing out. Somehow. <laughs> sort, sort this thing out somehow. I should know what to do. I nod. I don't like this one bit, but he's right. I look up to the window and lean on the windowsill. The sun already hid behind the clouds again, and the snowfall still continues. The snow forms white caps on trees and covers everything in sight. If I opened the window, cold arctic wind would bring some inside, too. I could extend my arms and watch how the snowflakes melt in my fur, or get stuck between my whiskers. Suddenly I feel a heavy paw on my shoulder. Hey, everything will be fine, I'm sure. He gives me an earnest smile that could melt ice. It does make me feel a bit better about this, uh, about this all. I'm glad I told him about the key, otherwise I'd be alone with this here. Probably even more panicked. Thanks, I'm glad you're here with me. I wish I could help you somehow, though. I, you know, you already did. Just moments ago I felt awful, but now I'm even hopeful. Come on now, let's, get the, let's go to the reception. He nods and we both leave the empty cafeteria in silence. Walking to the lobby, I glance at Bjorn. He's looking straight ahead, focused and collected. There's a gleam in his brown eye, shining above his furry snout. I wonder what he's thinking about now. The silence between us doesn't feel uncomfortable, but Bjorn was much more talkative during the lunch, and I'm afraid he hasn't yet warmed up to me yet. I'm afraid he hasn't warmed up to me. Uh, Bjorn? Yes? Is something on your mind? Oh, not really. Why do you ask? Just wondering. Hmm. You know, first you're helping me with the bag, now you're helping me with the key. You'll get me wrong, I'm thankful for that, but I can't help but feel like I'm using you. Bah, you yeah, beats sitting alone in the room. <coughs> Don't worry, I'm more than used to that. Having younger siblings, I grew up carrying their stuff and helping them with minor stuff. I nod, feeling a bit better about that. Hey, do you want to go somewhere after that? Do you have something specific in mind? Hmm. Thought about a game of snooker. Don't worry. I don't know the rules either. I chuckle. He doesn't seem like it at first, but he's quite a cheerful guy once he opens up. We'll see. I still have more pressing matters at paw. Hmm. I tap my paw pads on the counter nervously. The closer we are to talking to someone from the staff, the more nervous I get. At least I'm not alone here. I glance sideways, looking at Bjorn, and I see him leaning on the window count on the wooden counter, looking out at the window at something. Lights from the chandelier hanging from the ceiling are all reflected in his big brown eyes. He notices me looking and turns towards me, too. 
What's up, Carvin? I open my muzzle to answer, but before I have a chance to reply, the janitor emerges from the utility room. She's a wolf of an ambiguous age. Could have been 30 as well as 50. Go to the dog. Haven't Trigger do help Ned? Um, go to the dog. I lost the key to my room. I went to look for it around the guest house, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Has anyone found it returned it here? A janitor smiles at me reassuringly, completely in phase, and I start to suspect that I'm not the first one to lose the key to the room in this guest house. No, not yet, unfortunately. Did you leave the guest house after you got the key? No, I didn't. So it still has to be somewhere in the guest house. It'll keep my eyes open. Let's not assume it's gone. Your name and room number, please. Carvin, room number 17. A janitor opens some ledger, searching for something. Your room is a single room, so we don't have a second key for it. I'll call the office to get the spare key, so you'll be able to access your room in the meantime. She takes an old flip phone out of her pocket and dials a number. Someone on the other side of the line picks it up quickly, and a muffled voice escapes from the small speaker. A janitor pulls the phone, puts the phone to her ear, and starts to explain the situation, and I switch my attention from her to Bjorn. We've just met today, but he has been really friendly towards me. Even though he was a bit intimidating at first, and I know almost nothing about him yet, now I somehow feel at ease with him. Look, Art. Have a minute or two. Blocked? I switch my attention back to the janitor, sensing troubles. She speaks with an urgent tone, too fast for me to understand her besides some single words. She ended the conversation with a simple headet and put down the phone with a sigh. It looks like nobody from the office will be able to make it here today. We weren't prepared for the snow to start falling so early this year, and it's such amounts. They said the key that will come tomorrow morning. In the meantime, I will look for your key. For today, you will have to move to another room. We don't have any single rooms left, unfortunately, but I can show you which rooms have a bed still available. We have a lot more double, double rooms than single ones, so most of the students got a room with a second bed. But maybe one of your friends still has a free bed in their room. You could ask them, but if none will have one, then you can come back here and I can find you something. She gives me an apologetic smile and points to a small basket on the counter filled with sweets. Maybe you want some? I shake my head, looking down at my paws. Can I take one? <laughs> I love Bjorn. Can I take one instead? Thanks. Not waiting for a response, he takes one and then hides it in his pocket. All my stuff is already in my room. I won't be able to retrieve anything from there until tomorrow. No, you're right. Wait a moment. She walks off to the utility room and returns after a short while, carrying something in her paw. Here's a bathroom kit for you. We always keep a spare few for those who forgot to bring their toothbrushes or soap with them. She passes me the kit, all packed inside a cloth pouch. We're really sorry about this. Can I do anything else for you now? I shake my head. If you'll have any questions or problems, please come back to me and we will try to sort it out. I'm not going anywhere, although by midnight I usually am asleep already. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Talk. Thank you. She smiles at me, turns around and returns to the utility room. Who well, I didn't really go as planned. Oh, the upside. They weren't even mad about the key. Now you are the one that can. Now you are the one that can be mad. That's hardly comforting. By the way, I'm surprised you didn't take a room with Miko. I was sure that you two were together. What is he saying? I blink, confused. Do we really give off that impression? Where did you get that idea? Of course I'm not together with him. He's my friend from middle school. We just know each other well. Easy there, easy. I get it. If you really aren't together, then I'm sorry. I just saw you being quite physical with each other next to the cafeteria entrance, so I assume that. What? No, that's not how- He got one thing right. I am attracted to males. I still don't know if I'm gay or just bisexual, just that I'm not straight. It's still all confusing to me. I'm pretty open about it now, but it took me some time to get there. He took me completely by surprise, and I had no idea how to even respond. It's just because we've known each other for so long already. Get your mind out of the gutter. I, I like males, but I'm not with Miko. And maybe keep it to yourself for now, okay? Aha! I knew something was up. Don't worry, that information is safe with me. So, anyway, what are you two going to do now? What are you going to do now? Because in any case, I happen to have a free bed in my room. If you feel like sharing a room with this bear, feel free to drop by. It's no problem for me. Oh, well, that would solve my problems. If you really wouldn't mind having a roommate. This seems convenient indeed, but on the other paw, I barely know him. I feel like I should spend more time with him before before agreeing. This is really tempting, but let me think of, think of it before I give you an answer, okay? Nah, you need to tell me right now. Just joking, I'm not going anywhere. But, if you'd be interested, you can look for me in the room number 14. I'll go. F I'll first go for a walk outside. 
I feel like I need a little. I feel like I need to get out of here for a while. Get some fresh air. Sure. See you later then. Okay. See ya. See ya. I turn around and go through the entrance door, leaving the warm and cozy guest house. Oh my god, my foot is asleep! Oh my god, guys, help me, my foot! Oh god! Pins and needles, pins and needles! Oh, okay. A wave of cold arctic air hits me when I exit the building, making me shiver. It's still snowing relentlessly. The chill wind blows through the tree branches like a, harpy, like a harpist gently pulling strings. Our bus, is, our bus is left already, so the janitor's car is the only one standing in the front parking lot. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. This is uh, going to be video one, and there will be another Dawn Course video up tomorrow as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!